Hello and welcome to the third Photoshop Beginners tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the text tool. Now the text tool is quite a basic tool that a lot of people use but it still has some depth to it and can be confusing for a beginner. So let's jump right in and take a look. I've got a blue background layer and to get onto the text tool I'm going to click onto it here on the panel or just hit T for the horizontal type tool. The other type tools you can have are vertical type tool and typing a mask. But for now, we're just going to use the horizontal type tool. And we're going to click and just type straight away. Now, as you can see in the top right on the menu bar, there are quite a lot of options that we can use for our text. So we'll go ahead and look at these options now. The first one is to change the text from horizontal to vertical. The second one is to change the font family itself. So for example, I can change it to Century Gothic. This, uh, this menu over here changes, the, um, changes the, the type of text, so whether it's bold, regular, italic, bold, italic, and that depends, of course, on the font itself, what, um, what different weights of font you have. This, um, this bar is the size of the text measured uh, in, in um, points or pixels and um, you can change this in three different ways. There's a drop down menu but that only comes with a limited number of, uh, of font sizes. You can simply type in a number or you can highlight the text that you want to change, hover over this T and click and drag to set the font size and as you click and drag you'll notice that the um, that the uh, the big text box gets rendered for you and you can see how big your text will be as with most of these sliders in Photoshop you can actually hold shift while you're clicking and dragging and that will make your mouse much more sensitive so a smaller mouse distance will make the will make the uh, text enlarge a lot more so that's that tool, and uh, remember, if you if you lose if you lose at any time the the text menu, just hit T to bring it back up. The next the next um, menu is the anti-aliasing tool. Now this is quite a complicated tool, and I'm not going to go through it in this tutorial. But just note for now that I usually set it to crisp because that gives you the nicest text render. The other ones may give you uh, less of a nice text render. You can see it's quite. Uh, pixelated and blurry around the outsides, so I usually stick to crisp. Next, you have the orientation of your text, whether you would like it um, left justified, centered, or right justified, uh, or aligned. Um, now, notice as soon as I click this, the text will sort of shift um, seemingly randomly. However, look at this this blue dot at, this, at the beginning of my text. This is the anchor. This is the point at which Photoshop realizes that the text has started. And notice that when I change the, uh, the alignment, the anchor doesn't move. So what Photoshop does is it uses the anchor to find out where your text should be, whether when it's left, right, or center justified. So for example, if I change this text to 100 points, uh, you might be able to better see. Um, I can align it to either side and this is useful if you have quite a lot of text that you want to that you want to use and you can either right justify, centre justify or left justify again it will go to that anchor point which you can move by moving the text so let me increase the size a bit more next you have the the text color palette and um, if you simply select the layer and go to the text color and change the color of the text that will change the text for the entire layer however if you select a specific letter you can actually change the color for one letter or a group of letters at a time by changing the color of the uh, of the specific letter so you can actually get quite a nice range of um, of text colors 
and you can use this to highlight things in text for example uh, you can highlight logos uh, and things like that so for example you could just as a very quick example highlight something like this and uh, that's a nice way of distinguishing text and you don't need another layer however notice that when you have more than one color on a single text layer that the overall color will change to a question mark and again you can reset everything by clicking on that when the layer itself is entirely selected of course this is overwritten by any text effects that you may have so for example if I have a white color overlay and then I try and set my text to black it won't do anything because Photoshop recognizes that this effect is placed higher than the text color itself. Of course you can disable the effect and revert back to the text color. Next you have the um, these, these tools which are the warp text tools which you can use to create quite a nice stylized look on your text. Um, Again, I would say from uh, an aesthetic point of view, use these with caution because text which is bent too much tends not to look good, whereas text which is only bent a little bit, for example, 5-10%, can look quite nice in a specific circumstance. And what's nice is that Photoshop keeps the text editability itself. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, rasterize this into, a, into an image. You can actually still edit the text and notice the warp effect will finish the warp where you stop typing so the more you add the higher or further the warp will travel and you can change the warp effect whenever you like so that's actually it for this tutorial but in the in part two of the tutorial I'm going to be showing you um, how to edit uh, uh, text even further. For example, has this problem ever happened to you? You start typing and suddenly text appears seemingly to crash into itself. Well, in the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you a very simple and easy way to solve this problem by using the character and paragraph menus. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.